Hey there, it's Jamie and welcome back to my channel. I hope you find this video helpful. It's basically gonna go over my whole process of how I embroider. I'm gonna talk about the tools that I use, optional items that just make embroidery easier, beginner stitches slash my favorite stitches. I purposely made a pattern that is a beginner embroidery pattern where each stem and flower uses a different stitch that I am showing you how to use. That's gonna be linked down below in my Etsy shop if you want to embroider along with that one. No pressure though, you can totally just use your hoop if you wanna practice these stitches. I do highly recommend practicing the stitches, seeing how many embroidery stitches there are out there can be a little bit intimidating. So just trying them out and finding your favorites makes patterns a lot less intimidating. And especially if you're going in to make your own patterns, then you know which stitches that you like to use in order to create the look that you're going for. So again, if you wanna use my pattern, that's gonna be linked in my Etsy shop below. But yeah, I'm just gonna take you through my whole process step by step. This is definitely a a beginner tutorial if you already know the basics this video is going to be very redundant for you but feel free to watch if you'd like you might learn something new and towards the end of this video I just have a time lapse of me finishing the project but I made sure to have the voiceover of that last section be a little Q&A because I do receive a decent amount of the same questions in the comment section on my embroidery videos so I thought I might as well answer those questions in this one here there's a lot to go over so without further Further ado, let's get into the video. So starting off with the essential tools, I use these wooden embroidery hoops for my finished projects. They come in all sizes. I typically use the 5 inch, but I highly recommend you get these plastic embroidery hoops while you're working on the project. They have a little nook on the inside that catches the fabric and keeps it from slipping while you're working on it. And if my project is for a 5 inch embroidery hoop, then I'll use one size up for the plastic so I have a little bit of wiggle room. EMC Embroidery Floss is my favorite thread, and they also have these little thread holders that you can wind your thread onto so it prevents it from getting tangled. Hand sewing needles, any ones will do really. Scissors, I have fabric scissors as well as pinking shears. Those give a zigzag edge to your project so that the fabric doesn't fray. And then I also recommend getting tiny little baby scissors to cut the tail ends of your embroidery thread. I embroider on cotton fabric. I like it much better than cross stitch fabric because this allows you to freely embroider wherever you want. You can see it is pretty thin here, that's what I like. If you want a more rustic look, a canvas fabric is also a great option. Some kind of pattern is always helpful. I usually print mine out and then I trace it onto the fabric. I like using this LED light pad for my tracing. Totally optional though. If you watch my how I design embroidery patterns, then you'll see me using a window in that one instead of this light pad. For tracing, I always use a mechanical pencil. And to finish my projects, I use hot glue. To explain the stitches, I'm going to be using 1, 2, 3 to explain where the stitches are going into the fabric and coming out of it. For the back stitch, we're coming up at 1, going down for 2, and then we'll come up for number 3, and that will go back down into the first number 1. And then we'll come up for four and go back down into three and so on and so forth. And a tip for the back stitch is if you want to do curves using it, then make your stitches shorter distances apart. Moving on to the split stitch, we come up at one, go down for two, and then you'll come up for three and your fourth stitch is going to be in between one and two. And now that next stitch will go down back in between three and four. I'm only using two strands of embroidery floss, so this stitch definitely works better when you have more strands. And typically you want the stitches to be closer together than what I'm doing here to really get that braided effect, but I spread them out so that you could see it better on camera. 
the stem stitch you are coming up at one going down at two this time in front of your stitch and you're not going to pull it all the way through you are going to come up at three in between one and two and come out over through the side so this becomes your starter stitch now you're going to go down don't pull all the way through and go up in between those two stitches and pull off to the side this is another stitch that works best when the stitches are closer together and it's great for curves. The Lazy Daisy stitch, you are coming up for one and you're going back down either through that one or right next to it. So that'll be the second one. And then don't pull it all the way through. You're gonna hold on to that loop and then you'll come up for three just wherever and however big you want the petal to be. Then you're gonna just pull that through the loop you've made and then pull it tight. There's your little petal and going down for four on the other side of that loop to secure it. My tip for this one is to make sure not to pull the petals too tight or else they close up and it doesn't really look like a petal anymore. You can see I accidentally did that because I grabbed the knot behind the fabric. Next up is going to be my favorite stitch, which is satin stitch. Right now I'm showing you how to make a leaf using it, but this is also debatably a lazy fishbone stitch. You come up for one, down for two, and then three will be next to and slightly lowered than your first stitch and then you'll go back down into two. And then for four, you're gonna do next two and slightly lowered on the opposite side, go back down into two, and you're gonna repeat that process, just going out and slightly lowered back down into two, and then this creates a little leaf. as more of a fill-in stitch now come up at one down at two and then at the same height as one you're gonna come next to it for three back down into two this is how I make my other leaves in this project and how I use the petals but the satin stitch becomes a fill-in stitch if instead of constantly going back down into two, you just go back down next to the bottom stitch like I am doing for the top here. And you can see I'm gradually getting lower and I'm rounding my top more. But you can do that technique for both sides and you'll have more of a circle in the end rather than this teardrop shape. The French knot stitch, we're coming up at one. And then using two hands for this one, we're holding our thread tight, looping it around our needle twice and coming back down for two right next to that number one stitch. Hold it tight and pull it all the way through and that's how you make a little knot. Showing it again, we come up for one, loop it around the needle twice, and go back down for two. Last stitch I'm showing off is the fishbone stitch. Come up for one, down for two, and then this is obviously easier if you have a leaf drawn on. But we're coming up for three, slightly lowered and next to our first stitch. And then you're making a diagonal where the leaf is going to be the widest width. And that's for four. Coming up for five on the opposite side, slightly lowered. And then go directly across to the widest width of the leaf and go down 
and then we're just repeating that pattern of going next to and slightly lowered diagonally and then going slightly under our previous diagonal and we are crisscrossing this doing every other side So these are the beginner stitches that I like to use the most and I use in most of my projects. And now I'll walk you through step by step how I make my project. So grab your embroidery hoop. Like I mentioned, I use the plastic ones with the little grip. Cut out a square of fabric bigger than the hoop you're using. And I am using a five inch embroidery pattern. So I am embroidering onto a slightly bigger plastic hoop. Lay your fabric over your hoop. You can iron it. I never do though, because I just pull it really tight to get rid of those wrinkles. I just repeat the process of tightening it and pulling the fabric until it is tight and sounds a little bit like a drum when you tap it. Now I use my light pad to trace on my patterns, but you can use a window or you can also put a light under a glass coffee table if you wanna replicate this effect. And I'm showing you here that I embroider on technically the back side of the embroidery hoop with these plastic ones so I can lay my fabric completely flat onto my drawing and then I can trace directly onto it. Once you're done tracing, I usually touch up my drawing just a little bit, and then I grab my embroidery thread. Now, in case you don't know, embroidery floss is made of six different strands. So whenever a project says to use one strand or two strands, or maybe it'll say strings or thread, it means to separate your embroidery floss to that number. So I'm using two strands throughout this project. So I'm twisting it the opposite way and I'm making a two strand one. And this makes your embroidery floss go a long way as well. And then tie a knot at the end of your embroidery string. This is just how I choose to do my knots, but there's lots of different ways to do them. And then lastly, I'm showing you tying knots on the back of your project. You wanna tie a knot, hold your finger down so it's at the base and then cut off the tail. And that is everything that I do to set up my projects. I'm gonna show you a little time lapse now of me finishing up this pattern and the stitch that I'm currently using will be listed somewhere on the screen. And now I'm gonna answer your questions just in the form of tips. The first one is just going to be that I'm using a floor embroidery stand. You can buy these if you want assistance in doing the two-handed embroidery stitches, but you can also just have your hoop hang over the side of a table for the two-handed stitches. For embroidering on black or dark fabric, you're gonna wanna use light when tracing on your pattern. And you also will want to use a white charcoal pencil on the fabric rather than just a regular mechanical pencil. I definitely get lazy and do this one myself, but I recommend not jumping long distances behind your hoop with your thread to start a new stitch, just because if you're using really thin fabric, sometimes it will show through. If your thread ever gets twisted and your stitches start to appear really thin, then just drop the needle and let it hang freely until it unwinds. And also if your thread ever gets in a knot or tangled, using the needle is really helpful to kind of poke through those knots and undo them. If you need to take out a bunch of stitches that you messed up on, then just cut off the knot at the back of the hoop and then cut the back side of the stitches and then you can use your needle on the other side to pull them up and out of your fabric. And lastly, if you're ever purchasing a pattern, they usually come at a set size. I typically have mine set for five inch hoops, but if you save that file and just pop it into a document, then you can resize it to whichever size hoop that you're using. Last part of this video, I have finished the project and now I'm gonna show you how I finish them off completely. So I'm taking it off of my floor stand 
And then I'm going to grab my wooden hoop. Again, I'm using the five inch for this one. Take both of the hoops apart and your fabric out of the plastic hoop. And then just flip your fabric over and align it with the inside portion of that wooden hoop. You can use the plastic one as a guide to make sure that it's centered and everything. And then you're just going to put the outside portion over top, trying to center it as much as possible. And you can see the wrinkles have appeared again, which means that it's not pulled tight all the way. So I'm gonna tighten it just a little bit, and then I'm gonna start pulling the fabric through the back again, and really trying to get it centered and exactly where I want it on this wooden one. And there's lots of ways to finish off the back of your hoop. I personally use hot glue. So when I'm happy with the position of my stitching, I then go in the back and I just put hot glue directly in between the hoop and the fabric and I fold it over. Throughout this whole process, I'm making sure to pull the fabric very tight. I don't wanna also drip any hot glue onto my project, so I'm getting it just on the edge there. And I'm being mindful that it is hot glue and I'm making sure not to burn myself. The last step is to trim off the excess fabric. I usually use pinking shears for this so it doesn't fray, but these ones work as well. And that is everything that I do during my embroidery process. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, but I tried to be as thorough as possible throughout this video. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Like I mentioned, my Etsy shop is going to be in the description box. I have several different patterns on there as well as the beginner embroidery pattern. Let me know down in the comments if you have any embroidery videos that you'd like to see from me or any patterns that you would like me to make. As always, I hope you all have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye.